custom cards. You guys make them and I review them. And can you believe that this is custom card review number 13? It's insane. So last week I asked you guys to make a bunch of custom cards built around the keyword copy and you absolutely delivered. I'm excited to share this week's winners. However, next week's challenge I got right here. Now I was supposed to put a poll out so that everyone could vote. I'm gonna do that next week, sorry. I totally, totally blanked on it with battle mode. I've been really occupied with a lot of things. But a user did reach out and asked if I could make a custom keyword for the challenge. So something that's not actively in Snap, uh, but that might be fun to make custom cards for because it's all just speculation in theory, right? We don't take this too seriously. It's just a bunch of what if. So I made a keyword kind of it's called negative I couldn't come up with a very good word But I wanted something that really symbolized what the keyword meant uh, I'm gonna explain that in a second so stay tuned But if you do want to make a card for this keyword join the buried verse discord totally free link in the description You can create a card right there with that link very easy to do You just need art and a good idea and then you can post one submission in the weekly challenge channel Okay, so let's check out what negative means. All right, so the next negative keyword that I've just kind of come up with here means uh, an effect triggers when the card is at a location with negative power okay so it's kind of like an ongoing but it's not really because it's only gonna trigger once unless the card specifies otherwise so if you might imagine you could play a card and if it's at a location that doesn't have negative power it just has positive amount of power then the effect isn't going to take place but if you can get that location to negative power and when I say negative power that means your side of the board that little circle that shows the power it's a negative number then this cards ability is going to trigger It'll just trigger that one time. Now, if your opponent's side is not negative and it's positive, then that doesn't mean it's gonna trigger for you, okay? It's gotta be on your side. But let's say you vipered over a negative card to your opponent's side and they have negative power over there. Well, it would trigger for them. So I hope that makes sense. For the sake of the challenge, so I hope that makes sense. I have some examples here. So like sewer system, necrotia, those kinds of locations that already give negative power. So if you played a card there that had zero power, then you would ultimately have negative power at that location, meaning that your negative abilities could then trigger. The hood's also just a great example of playing a card there, getting that negative power and then allowing your negative cards to trigger. It's kind of trying to find benefit in something bad that's on the board state. So you might end up losing that location, maybe, depending on the card that you guys make uh, but then you might be able to win the other ones from these awesome effects so some examples that I just quickly put together don't pay too much attention to the stat lines uh, is this card where you activate all cards and negative abilities so you got a bunch of negative abilities out there and then a big finisher boom it triggers them all again well some of the triggers could be like negative give another one of your cards plus three power right so if you can trigger that a couple times, you get plus three power elsewhere. You gotta watch out, you don't wanna give power to your negative location because you want these abilities to trigger. But for instance, with this card in the middle, if its ability did trigger, then it's done. It's not gonna trigger a second time. Okay, and then you could even have something conditional on the right. You can only play negative cards here and it gives negative two power, which is actually something that you want. Isn't that a little bit weird? Normally, this is a terrible card, right? But maybe we need more ways in the game to give negative power so that you can play these negative ability. I understand this might be a difficult keyword to make uh, custom cards for, but I actually enjoy making a challenge for you guys. We've had some pretty generic keywords. I think it's been a little bit too easy, so I'm throwing a curveball and seeing what you can come up with. I won't do this too frequently. We'll go back to the normal stuff later on, but every now and then I think it's fun. All right, let's get to these winners. But first we got my cards. We got Strange Supreme. Uh, six, five, play a copy of each opposing card. You move this game, but on your side. So kind of similar to, I guess, leader the way leader was copying cards except it's conditional not so much just this turn I copy all your all your stuff it's more like what I've been building up to I can now copy to my side if you can somehow play Magneto on six and then this on seven that's even better you move a few things with the Magneto but I think the ultimate value generators here would be like arrow Polaris juggernaut you know those things that can move cards relatively easy and then you can copy copy a bunch of them uh, to your side of the field that could be a lot of power but you also don't get your opponent's big finisher so it might not be worth it really depends on what your opponent uh, but it could be a huge swing you hit a couple things with juggernaut oh my 
gosh, that's value supreme. Uh, but here's the other thing too, right? What if I whiff my jug, Polaris doesn't have anything to hit, and Arrow pulled over like a leech or something? Well, I'm not exactly generating a lot of power with supreme. So there's a bit of a highs and lows. I feel like it's relatively balanced. There's not too many cards in this game that make it so that you can move your opponent's stuff, right? So this doesn't take into account of locations or if your opponent moves cards. That doesn't, it's only if you move cards so there's only a handful of options so I feel like it balances is out uh, I wanted to keep the move theme with Doctor Strange you know and I feel like this character is applicable for the game I, I like I know the what if series right so the multiverse getting different variants in, involved and stuff like that I feel like that works in snap you know we kind of have that a little bit with like Jane Foster and and, and Thor uh, Miles Morales and Spider-Man like we have a couple of different variants so to speak maybe maybe technically not variants but it, to someone who doesn't know too much i feel like it works and i thought this would be cool so i put it together okay uh, but let's get to number 10 number 10 andy c's copycat all right this one's pretty neat uh it's a three zero on reveal become a copy of the last card your opponent played i don't know if this has ties to mystique but i really thought that this would be a great ability for mystique um but her ability is cool already in the game but this one just seems more fitting to the character almost i know copycat's kind of a shape shapeshifter in the x-men universe so very cool she got that three zero stat line but it doesn't even really matter right it doesn't matter what the stat line is because it becomes whatever your opponent played um, but now here's the thing. So if you have priority, this could be really good because then you get to control what your opponent played. But if you do not have priority, this is going to be difficult to pull off efficiently or it could work out, I guess. If your opponent only plays one six drop, you don't have priority, you copy it, you become that six drop, that's fantastic. But in maybe a lot of scenarios, what happens is your opponent played the weak thing first, followed by a series of cards, and then this becomes the weak thing, and it kind of sucks. Uh, but it could still get a lot of value. If you do have priority, then you know exactly what this is going to become, uh, which I think is pretty awesome. Probably very efficient, because it's only costing three. If you play it on five, you're probably copying their four drop, or something like that if it just so happens you got to watch out there's all kinds of synergies and that, that, that maybe they're benefiting from that you might not be able to but overall i feel like you could get pretty decent value and i really like this card awesome artwork very very cool i especially love the uh one with the guns and she's like in the fire background that would be fire i would go for that one for sure <laughs> but i thought this was pretty awesome and uh thank you andy c for submitting number nine Toby's Echo. Dude, look at the variants here. Oh, I love the artwork, the frame break. Very well done. Uh, so ongoing at the end of each turn, copy the ability of the last card you played, a 2-0. So you can see why I kind of put these two together because they're almost kind of similar, uh, except also, I guess, polar opposites because with, with Copycat, she was copying your opponent stuff this one's copying your own the last card you played so you really got to pay attention to what you're playing it also is not going to copy the power so you just got to really focus your abilities and remember what echo is receiving every single time also you got to watch out that it's the last card at the end of the turn so you know turn order the cards that you play the card order really matters if you want like i don't know the echo to move and you want to play the nightcrawler last you got to pay attention and do that but it's pretty cool because in that application you can move echo and then you could play something else she gets that new ability and then you can do whatever with that is ongoing it's at the end of each turn if anything you can get like four abilities after uh, out of this because it's after two three four and five so it's like four different abilities i think it'd be pretty nuts so i imagine it would retain this ability and then just acquire a new ability from the last card every single turn uh, which honestly there's probably some absolutely insane combos here i mean it could almost be a two a two energy iron man right if you end up just like focus firing that last card on turn six or whatever and this become takes iron man's ability and then that's insane or i'm sure there's some nutty six drops that this could take on uh, i don't know how it would work with on reveals maybe it should just be ongoing unless the on reveal just triggers because that was the last one and it triggers at the end of the turn maybe that's how it would work but overall i thought it was a really cool card i love the art thank you toby Number eight, Ken's Banner. Oh man, I, I, I really dig this one because it's not Hulk, it's Bruce Banner. Uh, but he's looking all gloomy and sad because his nine power card got destroyed. If a card with nine plus power is destroyed at this location, copy its power. It's like almost he turns into the Hulk. I think it'd be sick if this card uh, could actually transform when it acquires that amount of power. 
right? It's conditional. You got to destroy a card with nine plus power, and then you'll get its power. So if you destroy the infinite, this becomes a three twenty. And all you have to do is shang chi it. But you gotta hope your opponent played it, so it's maybe not so great. I don't know. Uh, and then you just leave it out there, so you play it on three. And then also your opponent probably won't ever play anything that's high power if they see a banner there, right? So you kind of almost have to line it up. I think it'd be a tricky one to pull off. It requires some help, but it could get a lot of power for its cost. I feel like that's where the value is at. You obviously Shang Chi is like one of the best setups, right? If if you can Shang Chi, I don't know, banner on five, and then Shang Chi whatever the Red Skull or just anything. Boom, it's so much power. That's so good. A Tuma could be one that helps you out at that location, right? Because a Tuma would just get destroyed by Banner, but then, you know, would give its power to Banner. So that's like an easy 10 power, except then you kind of paid seven for it, and that's not so good. So maybe you got to find synergy elsewhere, kind of like with Venom. Actually, but now that I think about it, Venom doesn't really work because you have to have Banner there because it's location locked. So you know what? Yeah, I put Venom down there, but that doesn't really work now, does it? Uh, I think Ken's did mention our. Uh, Artem Zola, which would be pretty funny if you had like a high power card there and banner. So those are your only two. And then you use Artem Zola there and it's a 50 50. You hit banner, um, you're crying because that's going to do nothing. But if you hit that high power card and all of a sudden, let's say it's Red Skull, then you got 15 across the board from that one play of Artem Zola, which would be nuts. <laughs> it's 45 power play basically. So, anyways, I should have put Arnhem over there instead of Venom, but hey. What can you do? Regardless, I really like the flavor behind this one. It, and it just the ability was pretty interesting. Nine plus power. That's an interesting one, right? You know, such a difficult power total to hit. But there's a lot of cards that can make you do it. So I thought this was really great. Thank you, Fiends. Number seven, Franz Mobius. Oh my gosh, I watched the Loki show not too long ago. I keep talking about it, but it's so good. And Mobius is an excellent character. And this really embodies it. There's a lot of text here, so maybe it's a bit too wordy. I try to pick the ones that aren't too wordy. Big tip, guys, like I think the best cards have shorter text, but really impactful abilities. But anyways, so Mobius is a two, two. On reveal, copy your opponent's side of this location to a reset charge, add it to your hand. Okay, but what's a reset charge? So if it's a three, zero, on reveal, prune all your cards here, including this, and recreate what was saved in this reset charge so funny because that's they do that all the time in the show they just like throw out the reset charge and then bow, and everything goes back to normal back the way it was um and then and then you're just kind of you know resetting the timeline kind of with mobius here oh my gosh it's too funny it's too good and actually it's a really good ability like you copy all of your power opponent's power but you get to basically just move it elsewhere you copy it and move it elsewhere so if they did like some epic combo then you play mobius you capture it then you play the reset charge now mind you here's the kicker this is five energy right you're not just playing mobius just to play mobius you got to play the reset charge so that's like five for two power and then whatever else you can copy and then maybe that takes up too much space maybe it wasn't value enough because you're not copying it you know when it's been built up maybe they've been like buffing things with bishop or angela you're getting it at its time of copy so it might not be the same power level so check this out fran actually made a video giving it an example of how this card would work so look at mobius comes out copies the black panther and that unknown card and then you get the reset charge pretty cool it turns out to be the hood that's not so great and then two turns later <laughs> uh, use the reset charge where you got bucky barnes green goblin and the thing and i think they're playing the thing to show the example that that would disappear if you played a card and you now have black panther and the hood black panther activated his on uh, on reveal so he became 16 power and you got uh, the hood uh, the the demon rather back to your hands that was really cool love the example there and that they're all limbos that's too funny so yeah, Fran, you absolutely crushed it flavor-wise. I love this card. It was really well done. Thank you. Number six, Infernite's Sunfire. All right, so Sunfire is a 2-3. When this moves, destroy a random card at the old location and add a copy to the new one. So I think a very interesting thing to note here is that it's not particularly your side. 
it's random. It could be your opponent's size. So if they have one card at that location, but then you got like two cards, it's going to be one of those three that's going to get destroyed and then copied elsewhere. I think this is really good when you play it in a move deck. Obviously, you got to trigger Sunfire, but also like a give stuff deck. Obviously, you don't really want to destroy the stuff. You don't want to destroy a rock, let's say, with the breed or whatever, and then move it over. But if you can destroy anything else and create a bunch of copies and clog up your opponent's side of the board, oh my gosh. Like you just, let's say you just gave a few rocks, and then you move one of the rocks over, and then one location is just full of rocks, and you got Sunfire there. Sunfire is probably going to carry just on his power alone. And then you're destroying things too, right? If you could focus fire, like, I don't know, like Doctor Strange or Cloak or whatever, Sunfire away, and there's only one card at your opponent's side of the board, and you destroy it? Oh, that's, that's like crazy value, right? So I thought maybe this would be bonkers, but I think the randomness that's built in kind of makes it a little bit fair. Also creating the copies. Like let's say your opponent's side of the board is already full, you destroy the card, and then you move it over, and it's full. They can't create a copy. So it's just a straight up destroy. They don't even get the value elsewhere because of Sunfire. So I think that could be really good. But you have to move it. It's not easy to move. Three power, you know. Doctor Strange doesn't work all that great. Sure, you could Iron Fist it, which is pretty good. And then there's Heimdall and Cloak. But there's not too many options to support it. Uh, but you could go the destroyed route. Maybe there's like a move destroy hybrid out there that's just like waiting for this card. And then it becomes awesome i'm here for it i love those two mechanics so I, i'd really enjoy that number five homage scalers time variance authority we're going back to the tva the tva is a card now <laughs> i thought that was pretty awesome uh this one's just super cool because theme wise oh my gosh come on it's so on point uh so a three three when anything copies anything destroy it and any copy which is pretty cool that's actually an interesting uh tech option maybe it works really well in death package i thought or maybe even arnim zola if you want the copies that arnim zola summons to be destroyed i don't even know in which world that works maybe like some wolverines right and then they get buffed to crazy crazy amounts but i thought it was a cool you know tech option against moon girl you know all the devil dino decks that kind of thing or even multiple men. Not that we see multiple men a lot, but that would destroy all of the men. All the men would get destroyed. Too many variants in the multiple men world. They gotta go. They're out of here. Uh, the moon girls, stop Stop with this variance. You're breaking the timeline. You're out of here. You're cut. You're done, bud. So that is really cool. Theme wise, oh my gosh, you know, the time variance going after all of the, the you know, the timelines that are breaking. So cool. Um, so I just really, really enjoyed this card for that reason. And it's something I could actually see and snap. It makes sense to me. Like it's just another tech option against copy effects. And maybe it's just because there's not enough copy effects right now to warrant it. Uh, but I think like people would end up playing this. And then maybe even in that destroy arc type, I don't know if it works that well. Cause you know, maybe you want to generate copies. Even Deadpool is not a copy. It returns to your hand. So that doesn't even count. Um, so it's very specific to a few things. Basically really hardcore counters Moon Girl. Uh, but I thought it was pretty awesome. I thought it was a great idea. So thank you, Homage Scaler. This is awesome. Number four, Wilhelm Greyheart's Helmet Zemo. Oh man, check this one out. Okay, so this one, oh man, the ability is just so, so good with this one. Uh, again, another thing I could see in the game. So uh, Zemo, he's going to, he's a 3-3, and he's going to on reveal replace your hand with a copy of your opponent's hand. That's pretty sick. I don't know how good it is because, you know, they probably are using their hand because their deck is going to synergize. And if you play Helmet on Curve, on 3, you're still drawing from your deck, but you have this hand of stuff that hopefully works together. I think the utility here uh, it seems pretty obvious. It's knowing what your opponent has in their hand, but then your opponent knows what you have in your hand. So it's not that great. It's basically saying, okay, we're on the same playing field. I hope my cards in my deck are better than yours. And I also hope I'm smarter enough to play the cards that you gave me in a better fashion than you, which is tricky. So it's, it's definitely not that good, but it's cool. <laughs> I could see, I could see it being in the game. It works beautifully with the collector. So you play the collector on two, then you play helmet. So a collector gets plus one power if you from any card that's added to your hand, not from your deck. Well, that's like a full hand. If they have seven cards in their hand, boom, that's plus seven power to the collector. That'd be nuts. That'd be so good. I thought also maybe Maximus, just to make sure that your opponent draws a lot and then you have more cards that you get from your opponent. It's also a nice refill. Maybe you're playing a bunch of zoo. So you play a lot of one drops as quickly as possible and then you play helmet just to refill your hand and have options for the later game. 
that could be a really good application of this card. Another one I thought maybe is morph, just morph. <laughs> because you know what your opponent has in their hand and maybe if you want a cheap copy of whatever they've got kicking around, you know the odds are decent, you play morph. And maybe actually good morph value. So there's a lot of ways you can make use of Zemo here. And I thought the effect was really fascinating. And I could see this in the game. Why not? I don't think it's too game breaking. I don't think it's too frustrating. You know, locations kind of do similar things to this. But the problem with locations is we don't have control over them, right? So if there's randomness or if there's like hand swapping stuff, it's not great. But if we have a little bit of control, we choose when these effects occur. And it doesn't really disrupt whatever your opponent plans on doing. It's just, you know, kind of trying to change your game plan up in your hand. I think it's great. I think it's so good. So I really like this card. This, this is a great idea, uh, Willem. Thank you for submitting. Number three, Victon's Destiny. Oh my goodness, this is so good. Uh, I really like this one. This was also helped out by a bunch of uh, various Barry members. I think Quilava Trainer, Andy C helped out make this card. Very cool. Thank you for working together and helping with the art and the balance of these cards. It's awesome to see, uh, but this one is so cool. So very simple. 3-1. On reveal, add a future site to your hand. What is a future site? Well, a future site is always going to be the top card in your deck. And I imagine it's just going to kind of uh, rotate. So it's almost like a mirage. It's going to look like a future site. Maybe if it gets played, it'll look like a future site, like before it can copy the top card. Probably not. It says always. So it's just going to rotate in your hand as a mirage of what is to come. It is a copy, so you can't play it and then you get that copy, but you, I think the value is holding it in your hand to know what your next draws are. That's so important in Snap. Like imagine turn five, you're not sure if you're gonna win, you hope that next card is what's gonna give you the win and you get to know what it is. You'll know your odds of winning and then you just snap because it's like, oh, I'm actually about to top deck like a god. I'm definitely gonna snap and go in on this turn six. So I think it's great. One of the best applications I could think of was Mr. Negative. So Mr. Negative uh, needs a lot of draws. But the problem with Mr. Negative, I, I find sometimes, is, is the lack of consistency in your draws. You can definitely deck build to ensure that you'll get some good cards. But you know, there's a few pieces that really help negative, like for instance, Psylocke, you know, cause you wanna play Psylocke on two, so you can negative on three, increase your chances of drawing cards that are negatized. But sometimes Psylocke doesn't end up in your hand and you don't get to play it, it ends up in the deck. So what if you were able to see if one of those negatized cards is going to be Psylocke and then you just retreat because it's like, dang, I didn't get that negatized card that I needed. It's not Iron Man, it's not Wolfsbane, whatever else I got going on. It's just Psylocke and I didn't draw accordingly and I negatized the wrong stuff. And on top of that, if it is that Iron Man, then you know you're about to draw the nuts and you're well set. So you just snap your life away into the turn six and just have fun. So I think this is a really great card. So applicable in so many different fashions. I think a lot of decks would really enjoy running this. Great in the tournament scene and competitive scene, I imagine, because just having the knowledge of knowing what your next draw is. Great for battle mode. Hello? Get out of there before it gets too crazy because you know what you're drawing, the value. And then you can't even really like, the card itself isn't that great, right? It's all about like the knowledge that you get because 3-1 is pretty low stat line. That's not great. And then the, you know, on reveal, you don't really need two of them. I imagine if you had two future sites in your hand, they'd both just copy the same card. So unless you're like trying to get a bunch of copies of the same card and play them, maybe that's okay until the TVA comes out and destroys it. <laughs> but you know, like I, th I think uh, for the most part, you're just using this to get knowledge on your own deck. So I, I thought that was really awesome. What if Subterranea happened or rock sliding? You got a bunch of rocks and you get to know if you're going to draw a rock or not. Escape. Oh my gosh, I love it. I love it. Well done, Victon and the Berryverse team. Number two, Jack Packs Chitori Soldier. Oh my gosh. Okay, so I adore this concept. I really, really like it. The problem I have is the more I thought about this card is how absolutely broken it became okay dies the killmonger let's just let's just put that out in the in the space here this gets wrecked by killmonger like like absolutely hard counter and and you're dusted okay but if your opponent's not running killmonger the the power that this can get to is nuts i mean if you draw it late that also sucks too but if you play this on curve one two three four five six all these soldiers are gonna have six power and you played six of them for very 
you know, cost effective to, to, to power levels. So it's just crazy. Okay, I didn't even talk about the card yet, so <laughs> I'm too excited. So it's a one zip. On reveal, add a copy of this to your hand, but then it also has the ongoing plus one power for each other Chitori soldier on the field. And by the way, sometimes people say, oh, well, you can't have both. Well, a lot of cards do. Well, not a lot of cards, but a few cards do. Like Electro, for instance, has an on reveal and an ongoing. It is something that can happen in Snap. I think this card is a great application of that. So yeah, so you get plus one power for each other one you're playing oh my gosh not to mention we could buff it up with kazar right you play kazar boom another plus one to all these soldiers i just love the concept of building a soldier deck oh my gosh i'm here for it i love ultron for that reason right you build a drone deck basically but it all happens on turn six i want to slowly assemble my army and overwhelm my opponents with just a bunch of soldiers and how can you do that well you every time you play one one goes to your hand okay that's another collector buff as well right we got to keep that in mind maybe that's another broken application you throw a collector out there you throw in these soldiers out you moon girl you get multiple soldiers you're playing two at a time and you just build in this crazy army like there's no tomorrow you're running out of space killmonger you lose <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's kind of how I see this all playing out. But then you could also stack it with Onslaught to buff all of these, the Kzar, but also the soldiers. Oh my gosh. Then they're like looking at like 12 power each. Now, mind you, if you could fill the entire board with soldiers, I don't know if you could maybe with Elysium because this gets discounted to zero, then you're playing them like crazy. I don't know. You'd have to find copies elsewhere. Bar Sinister or, or, or London Sinister, like anything like that to create copies, cloning that. So anyways, if you're doing that stuff and you fill the entire board, all of them would be 12 power, meaning that you'd have 48 evenly across every location, 140 four power total oh my goodness that'd be crazy i mean obviously you can't really quite do that but the soldier army like oh i would definitely do a challenge video of trying to get a full sol soldier board oh my gosh that's so good anyways i just love the idea that i want this in the game it needs to be balanced somehow a little bit it's a little bit too bonkers i think it dies to killmonger i guess that's the balance but come on there can't just be one ultimate counter i guess maybe even cosmo stops it enchantress i guess there's a bunch of counters in the game that could actively stop this but i just feel like the value for how cheap you're playing these cards because you can play other things too and like what if maybe you want to killmonger it because you're playing death and you want to discounter like crazy and the moon girl the death with the soldiers like oh my gosh that'd be crazy application too oh my goodness that's why this had to get number two it's so fun to talk about so many crazy avenues we could take with this card right, so thank you jack pack this was an awesome submission number one is bob <laughs> yes sir guilty flag on with number one and it's bob agent of hydra dude this is so funny and so well done but the effect is super fun too so he's a one negative one the one negative one not great to play you don't want to play him but you do want to play him because you're gonna give a copy of him to your opponent's hand so you're making your side of the board pretty terrible but your opponent then has a bob and they don't want a bob so they, they, they maybe they'll give the bob back by playing it somewhere and then you got an another bob and then what are you doing with the bobs now we're just playing a bunch of bobs and passing bob back and forth oh gosh that sounds terrible but <laughs> but then it just gets out of hand i think it works best actually in a destroy deck right you're playing carnage venom whatever or probably not venom but you know deathlock so you destroy the bobs if you do end up with multiple of them uh, and then and then you're fine but maybe you also run this in a disruptive deck where you play bob and then you play black widow and you play whatever else Iceman. could you imagine icing your opponent's bob like now they have to pay two for this just to get rid of it out of their hand oh my god so funny oh my gosh so this one just made me laugh also look at the variants dude the variants are sick this looks like straight up in the game i think there should almost be more comedic relief characters in the game we kind of had that jeff hint you know the jeff the baby land shark coming soon but you know I, I feel like you know it's marvel you could have some funnier stuff there's some funny characters in the marvel universe we could add a few and i think bob would just be too funny the ultimate henchman oh my gosh it'd be so funny but the ability is not so what if you copied it with moon girl you had a bunch of them and you play even more bob you just bob your opponent out and then they they have to play them well i guess you leave it in their hand and then you, they could just ignore it i guess they could just ignore it but then their hand is kind of brick and then maybe you play ronin the accuser to get buffs because they don't want to play that bob or they wait till the end of the game and they play it at the location they don't think is going to win but just like a you know helping you out you don't care if you get a bob at the end of the game so oh my gosh I, I it was funny the art is good 
I, I like the effect. It seems realistic to be in Snap. I'm saying funny so many times because it really did make me laugh. Uh, but this was a really good one. I love Bob. This is great. Thank you, Guilty Flag on. And thank you everyone for submitting. These were awesome submissions. I hope this new keyword, the custom keyword, is all right with everyone. We're not gonna do it all the time. It's a one-off just to try it out, just to see how it goes, right? So I'm interested to see what you guys come up with that with that. And as always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.